The Ford government has repeatedly said we need to learn to live with COVID. But what exactly does that look like? Here's an interesting conversation with epidemiologist Colin Furness on a future with COVID that doesn't include restrictions and lockdowns. But first, here's exactly where we stand right now in this province. What we know is limited. We know that wastewater signals appear to have leveled off, and that is potentially really good news. What we're all hoping has happened is that they, is that they actually start to fall. Colin Furness believes this past long weekend is a wild card, though, and whether the numbers go up or down is uncertain because people's patterns likely changed. He does think when they go down, it will be as fast as when they went up. Generally speaking, epidemic curves are, are symmetrical. It's, it's uh, known as Farr's law, that however steep the curve is going up, it's equally steep coming down. However, a new variant could cause a curveball, and right now there are three being watched closely. XD, XE, and XF. These three variants can arise only really in one way. That is, someone gets infected independently twice at the same time with two different strains of COVID, those two strains then encounter each other in the same cell and exchange genetic information. And the moral of the story here is when you let it rip, when you let the population get very sick all at once, you create ideal conditions for new variants to emerge. And that's what's happening. And I doubt very many governments will have the stomach to impose more lockdowns or strict mandates again. So how do we truly learn to live with COVID? I think the way to, to start answering that is to say there's ways that we shouldn't learn to live with COVID. Furness believes one way to do that is to watch wastewater signals and if they are up, people would know to wear a mask. Let's do as little as we need to do, but let's do what is needed, when it is needed, just like we have weather forecasts, we may need wastewater forecasts. Furness would also like to see CO2 detectors, which show how much exhaled air there is in a room to be in all public spaces like restaurants and make them as common as smoke alarms. The higher the carbon dioxide readings in a room, the, that means the poorer the ventilation. And that can be easily fixed by opening a window. CO2 detectors can be found online or in hardware stores and cost roughly $140. This is the one that I have. It's a small device and you can see it's got a reading there. Right now it's saying uh, 417. That is That means the air I'm in right now in my home office is very close to outdoor air. This air is very, very fresh. Outdoor air is about that. So okay. that means not a lot of exhaled air in this room. It needs to be mandated. Uh, Belgium is doing work on this, I believe, uh, mandating indoor air quality standards and, and, and having this done. And they're not the only, they're not the only country doing it, but we're not talking about that here. Furness believes there are two extremes, people who are not afraid of COVID at all and don't believe there's a risk and those who are too afraid of it. He'd like to see a middle ground, starting with awareness so people can access the tools they need to keep themselves safe and get back to living.